Nightwing has moved over to Bloodhaven, where he discovered that he has a sister in Melinda, he's currently kind of dating Batgirl, and he's been getting help from the entire Bat family, plus Superman. But now it's time for the final battle for Bloodhaven to happen, with the assistance of what you could call the Gotham Knights. This is the Comic Story and Channel. I take comic books, I break them down into a summary, basically letting you know what's going on in the world of comic books, acting it out as an audio drama, and that way you know what's out there and can add them to your collection. If you enjoy this type of content, please let us know in the comments down below, as it's what keeps this channel alive. Also, give this video a like. But let's get into Nightwing issues 93, 94, 95, and 96, wrapping up the Leaping Into the Light arc. Here we go. Bloodhaven has always been a rough place to live, and that's why Nightwing is trying his best to bring order and peace to the city. And after last night's attack, it has only filled him with more determination, as Nightwing is getting ready to wash off the graffiti that is on Alfred's statue, his tribute. Barbara asks if he's okay. He tells her, not really. She then says that she's running facial recognition on the people who did this. Will exposing them and punishing them accordingly make him feel better? And Nightwing laughs. <laughs> Yeah, it would, Babs. At that moment, Barbara notices activity in the park, and suddenly the voices yell out to Nightwing, telling him to freeze. Before he even has a chance to do what they say, they open fire on him, and he asks, Are you shooting at me for cleaning? He then throws the bucket of water, asking, What's the bigger threat? The cloth or the bucket? After knocking the officers out, he then hurries to grab his bike, and Barbara tells him that he needs to hurry up out of here. There are patrol cars coming in from every direction. As Nightwing speeds away, he looks back at the increasing amount of cars that are chasing him, stating, Yeah, looks like I gotta get off this road, and he presses a button on his bike. Suddenly, a small grappling hook shoots out of the bike, latching onto a sign, whipping him around it, launching him up into the highway. But as he goes to land, the front wheel hits the edge of the barrier, and he falls off with a hard thud. She asks if he's okay. He should probably stay in Gotham tonight, and Nightwing tells her, Yeah, I'm on my way. So the next morning, he brings breakfast to Barbara at her desk as she tells him that she made a full database of the identities of the guys that he unmasked attacking Haven the other night. And he's going to want to see this. She brings up the name and Nightwing asks if she's serious. And she tells him, yep. This is terrible, but also great. You're incredible. That's why I love you. Suddenly, the two pause for a moment at those words. That was... Not supposed to, uh, come out. She then asks, are you sorry for stating that you loved me? Nightwing thinks about it for a moment. Yes. No. And then his phone rings and he quietly sighs. Thank God. As he answers, Melinda says that she is sorry for calling him like this, but wherever he is, he's going to want to get out of Haven as soon as possible. He asks what's going on and she tells him that the commissioner is using last night's attack to be a little extra grumpy. So a short while later, the police begin to detain the children of the park and Nightwing, out of costume, walks up asking, All right, what is going on here? What do you think you're doing? Commissioner McLean asks if there's a problem and Dick tells him, Yeah, Haven is supposed to be a welcoming space, not very welcoming when these children are being treated like criminals. McLean says that a lot of these kids are criminals. They're just protecting the city. After last night, they wouldn't want anything else happening to this little project of his, would they? Dick says that he wants the officers out, but McLean smiles, telling him that he may need to accept that he is not in control of every situation. Dick then hears the squeal of the brakes as a new van begins to arrive, and he asks what is going on. McLean says that he invited the media here to talk about the terrible criminal activities that have occurred in Haven after only a single day of opening, and to talk about what the Bloodhaven PD is going to do about it. Dick whispers into his earpiece, calling for Barbara, and she asks, Now? And so he tells her, now. Using Haley's paw, she hits enter with a boop, just as McLean begins to speak in front of the cameras. Everyone, I am deeply sorry to see these things happening. This betrayal of so much goodwill. The people that built this would bite the hand that feed them like this. Dick interrupts him. That is not true. There's a video of last night's attack, Kamish. McLean says that he's afraid that there isn't a video. The city's cameras were forcibly taken offline last night. Besides, even if we did have cameras, the people who did this were masked. Dick then asks him, and how would you know that? Everyone here can judge for themselves just how helpful the footage is going to be. It's just gone live and links have been sent to every major news network. 
The video then shows several of the perpetrators being unmasked, and all of them have been independently identified as members of the Bloodhaven Police Department. As all of the reporters' phones begin to ping, they all look at it to see references, and they begin to call out to McLean for questions. He turns back to Dick. Where did that video come from? And Dick looks to him. You just may need to accept that you're not in control of every situation, Commissioner. As Dick walks away, he says that that couldn't have gone any better. Thank you. But Barbara tells him that he should be thanking Haley. It was one of her new tricks. He laughs. <laughs> what a good dog. But we need to talk about what's next. And she tells him later. For now, just enjoy this. Seriously, we don't get wins like this every day. So later that night, Melinda calls McLean at home, telling him that the feds know that he personally was the one who ordered the attack on Bloodhaven. She has someone on the inside feeding her information. He has 20 minutes until they come. He has a ticket waiting for him at the Bloodhaven airport. All he needs to do is just tell her where Blockbuster's files are, because if they get those, they all go down. McLean opens his safe, telling her that he has them, and he's taking them with him. There is only insurance. Thank you for the warning. I doubt we'll speak again. He hurries out of his home with Melinda hanging up, calling Oracle, stating that he took the bait. Get ready. So on the road, Nightwing catches up to McLean's escort, telling Barbara that he's got eyes on him. They just need to handle a few things first. After Nightwing lands on one of the motorcycles escorting the commissioner, the other one opens fire by Nightwing throwing a baton to knock the man off of his bike. He then spins the bike around, facing McLean head on. The two rev their engines, and Barbara says that she's pretty sure that this isn't how chicken works, and he's in a car! McLean isn't going to care if he hits you. Nightwing tells her, that's what I'm counting on. And the two race towards each other, with Dick crashing into the front end of McLean's car, causing him to swerve and crash. As McLean falls out of the vehicle, Nightwing says that there are about seven ways that they can do this. Do you want to know which of those is the least hurtful? McLean fires a shot, and Dick tells him, you know, that was incorrect. The correct answer was option three. He throws one of his batons, knocking the gun out of McLean's hand. And with no other choice, McLean desperately tries to fight and get away. Nightwing deflects the attacks, returning with his own, telling him, You're the man who disappoints me the most in the city. Blockbuster doesn't try to pretend to be anything other than a power-hungry thug, but you? You put on a badge and you swore to protect and serve. You're everything wrong with Bloodhaven, tucked into a uniform. After knocking McLean down, he picks up the briefcase and opening it. He's running to the airport. He has several fake passports and a boatload of cash. Not a good look, Commission. As the sound of sirens get closer, Nightwing picks up the Blockbuster files and McLean yells to give them back. But Nightwing fires his grappling hook, telling him that it looks like the feds have caught up to you. Good luck with that! The next day, the Attorney General holds a press conference announcing that Commissioner Gil McLean attempted to flee the country, but he was apprehended. The Bloodhaven Police Department has been a dark stain of all of the law enforcement in this nation, and with the help of Mayor Zuko, they have brought in someone who they think might be able to help turn things around. That is why she is happy to present Commissioner Margaret Sawyer. Her work in Metropolis is well known, and they are grateful that she has agreed to help them here. Margaret takes the podium. Thank you, and you can all call me Maggie. I'd like to thank the mayor for her appointment, and I can promise you that I and Dan Turbin will root out crime and corruption within the police force. No one will be above my attention. No one. As Blockbuster is watching the conference, the electrocutioner asks if they're going to make her disappear. Don't ask questions. It makes me wonder why you want answers. But no, she won't disappear. It would just lead to more unwanted attention. Now get in the car. Later, Barbara begins to go through all of the files that Blockbuster had, stating that they had everything that they could have ever wanted. Investments, drop-off locations, transactions, payments to criminals, police, and government officials. Melinda said that the feds are already questioning McLean, but even if he gives them nothing, they have everything that they need. The plane ticket with his name on it, though, was a nice touch, Oracle. Barbara asks if she's really okay with all of this, and Melinda says that she watched McLean drag the former mayor's body away before he disappeared. She isn't about to lose any sleep over this. Talk to you all later. But as she hangs up, she gets another call from Blockbuster, and he tells her that he is not pleased. Melinda tells him that she was given a list of names, and she picked who would be the least effective. Sawyer was the commissioner of Metropolis. How much crime has she had to deal with in a city with Superman? She didn't have much time. Blockbuster then says that she should have found time to talk to him, just like she should now. He's currently waiting for her in her mother's home. Melinda hurries to her mother's to find Blockbuster there and her mother pouring him tea. 
Can we go for a drive? Melinda tells him, of course, but whispers something to her mother that she'll be okay. As Melinda and Audrey get ready to get in, Audrey is stopped by one of Blockbuster's men telling her that it's a private conversation. She gets ready to take a swing, but Melinda tells her it's all right. And Blockbuster says that he promises not to keep her out too late. As the door shuts, Blockbuster says that they're being challenged. Haven, now the commissioner, a man even threatened him in his own building two days ago. They look weak and he doesn't like looking weak and it all started with Dick Grayson. Grayson took a part of my city. He should have died when his building blew up long before this happened. Commissioner McLean questioned a woman from the building and she said that Dick sounded the alarm before the attack. And I know who tipped him off. As the door to an abandoned warehouse opens up, the electrocutioner sits in a chair beaten and Blockbuster looks to Melinda. It was him. It was a rat in her own ranks. He and Brutal were the only people in the room aside from us and Maroney when I shared the plan. He's the only one that we can't trust. Melinda asks what are they going to do to him and Blockbuster says that they're going to send him a message. Actually, they're going to send him a lot of messages. So Melinda then asks, has he admitted to anything? No, but he will. Melinda grabs a pair of clippers telling him to leave it to her. She'll find out exactly how much he knows. Blockbuster nods and leaves and once he's gone, Melinda hurries over to pull the tape off of his mouth. Relax, don't scream. I'm going to get you out of here. After untying the binding, she calls Nightwing, telling him a man is about to die because of her tip-off. And Blockbuster's here. She needs him to. But that's when Electrocutioner shocks Melinda and then calls her Blockbuster to come back. It was her! She was the rat! Nightwing yells over the phone, asking if she's there. Answer him. And Blockbuster picks up the phone. I'm afraid Melinda can't come to the phone right now, Mr. Grayson. And then crushes it. A short while later, Melinda begins to wake up with Brutal stating, Hey, welcome back, Madame Mare. Blockbuster's pretty pissed at you, and now he wants some information. But before she could answer, there's a knock at the door. Brutal gets up telling Blockbuster that she's awake. And as he opens the door, Nightwing jumps in with a kick while throwing a baton and knocking out the electrocutioner. Melinda looks up asking how did he find her, and Nightwing says that they tracked the ping off of her phone before the call ended. And Audrey followed them. But as Nightwing is helping Melinda to her feet and they begin to walk out, it's Blockbuster that stops him. I am very disappointed to see this. Nightwing grabs his batons, telling him, I guess we're going through him. Blockbuster shouts out, There is no going through me! And he starts charging at them, a car crashing into him with Audrey opening the door. Everyone, get in! Brutal and Electrocutioner come out asking if everything's okay. But Nightwing helps Melinda in and Audrey drives away. Meanwhile, at the police station, a detective sits McLean down, telling him that he's never been a big fan, and he's more than happy to put him away. McLean folds his arms. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. There's a file on Blockbuster, and I'm not giving it to you unless you grant me full immunity. The detective tells him, so you'll turn the files over if you're promised protection? Yeah, and only if Maggie asks nicely. <sighs> well, that's a real shame, because that's not what Blockbuster wanted to hear. Without any hesitation, the man pulls out a gun and shoots McLean in the chest. Later, Melinda meets with Maggie, explaining that she was working with Blockbuster in secret. And Maggie says, Suppose I believe this. Why tell me? Melinda says because now Blockbuster knows that she is working against him. And she has something that he doesn't know that she has. She has paperwork on Blockbuster, and if they're going to take him down, they gotta do it fast. They have to act tonight. Maggie asks, how are they supposed to do that? She doesn't have enough cops that she trusts, and their chief witness was just shot. Melinda is stunned. McLean was shot? Probably because Blockbuster thinks that he has what we have. Maggie goes on stating that she doesn't trust anyone anymore. She's on her own here. And then a familiar voice tells her, No, you're not. As Melinda and Maggie step up onto the roof of the garage, Nightwing and Batwoman are standing there, and Nightwing says, It's good to have you in Bloodhaven. Superman spoke highly of you. As character references go, it doesn't get better than that. Nightwing then says that they have people. They'll do the work. They'll catch Maroney and Blockbuster's lieutenants in the act. All the police department has to do is be there and make sure that everyone is processed by the books. Maggie says that even if she wanted to, she doesn't know who she can depend on in the department. So Nightwing hands her Blockbuster's file. This is the list of every cop that has taken money from Maroney or Blockbuster. Maggie looks at the file. I get why you're here. So I'm trusting what you're saying, but I've made a mistake trusting Batwoman before. 
The two of them stare at each other for a moment, and Nightwing steps in. I don't know what this is, but this city has been run by a corrupt and violent man. We have an opportunity to carry out the single biggest strike against organized crime that Bloodhaven has ever seen. Are you in? Tim, the Titans, and the rest of the Bat family all respond to the comms. Yeah, we're in. And Nightwing tells the family, thank you. Seriously. Barbara then begins to lay out the plan, explaining that Blockbuster and Maroney have four major crimes planned for tonight. There's a shipment of arms coming into the Bloodhaven docks, a cargo plane trafficking people, and a few tons of very poorly made, very harmful substances being trucked in. And Boss Maroney himself will be at a rare jewels buy. If they take down Maroney and Blockbuster tonight, that will leave them in a position they can't recover from, which will give Commissioner Sawyer enough time to clean things up. As the time comes and each crime is thwarted, the calls come into Blockbuster and he calmly gets up from his seat in his penthouse, telling Brutal and El Executioner to come. We're going for a drive! They pull up to Haven and he pulls on an RPG. It's time to remind them who owns this city! This is my city! This is not their haven! Back with the others, the cleanup and arrests all begin as Sawyer and her teams arrive. But before anyone can celebrate, Barbara radios in that they have a problem. Haven's been hit. Nightwing and Batwoman rush down as the buildings are burning. And Nightwing says they have to evac everyone. He runs into the library where he sees a blockbuster already there with two children telling him to lose the sticks or he squishes them. Nightwing tosses his batons and blockbuster tells him, Good, now get on the floor, face down! Nightwing does as he's told, and Blockbuster releases the children and steps down on Nightwing's back. Did you really think that anything would change? I own the city! He then lifts up both fists, bringing them down with a thundering tomb. Nightwing lays there, in a crater created by the hit. Blockbuster looks down to see his mask have fallen off. And he realizes that Dick Grayson is Nightwing, and his anger only increases. Nightwing comes to with Blockbuster telling him, This entire time, I've been fighting against the city's most frustrating rat, and there was another pass behind the mask, like a Russian nesting doll of vermin. Nightwing places back on his mask, asking him, You think this is going to be easy? Perhaps not. I'll execution or brutal. Merge in my location. Nightwing tightens his fist. Sounds like that'll take a few minutes. Good. More than enough time to take you down. He begins to knock Blockbuster back a bit, jumping over, grabbing his batons, and activating the taser function on both ends. He then uses them to give his hits a little extra effort. He tells Blockbuster that he's so sick of men like him. Men who could do anything, and they choose to hurt people. Men who have everything and still want more. The city deserves so much better than you. Blockbuster wrestles Nightwing off of him, shouting, This is my city! And Nightwing fires the grappling hook, latching onto Blockbuster. He pulls the cord tight, rushing in with both feet forward, kicking Blockbuster in the face, knocking the giant man over. Barbara, fully suited up, says, I just arrived. And Nightwing tells her, don't worry about me. Take care of the evacuation. Haven's on fire. Barbara stops him. Actually, it's not. The people of Haven came together and they're helping put out the fires. Nightwing continues fighting against Blockbuster, telling her that it looks like Bloodhaven is putting out your fires. The city is fighting you and they know everything about you. As Blockbuster is being beaten down, he calls out to Brutal and Electrocutioner, asking where are they. And just outside of the library, Barbara and Batwoman are stopping the both of them. Yeah, you're not going in. There's a private meeting going on behind these doors. Brutal tells the other thugs not to hesitate, but Barbara takes out a tablet, telling them, Hang on! Sure, they can attack and not win, but before we all leap in, I have something that you should all definitely see. Back inside, Blockbuster grabs one of Nightwing's batons, crushing it. You are not the first in the city to try and stand up against me. After I'm finished here, I will break everyone who has ever helped Dick Grayson. Everyone who has ever known about you. Everyone that you have ever loved. I will find all of them. Nightwing coughs asking, You think you know who I am? You don't know Nightwing. You don't know Dick Grayson. Because if you did, you would know that there's no way in hell either of us would allow you to hurt our friends. He launches himself forward with a kick that sends Blockbuster out of the library and into the street. To add insult to injury, the kids then throw a bucket of water on him, telling him that this place doesn't want him anymore. Blockbuster gets up and begins to run to his limo, telling Electrocutioner to open the door. But Electrocutioner stops. Actually, no. 
We know what you did. The heroes showed us. You own Bloodhaven. I did two years there. It's the worst prison I've ever done time in. Two years of my life stuck in hell and it turns out it was all because of you! Blockbuster looks up into the driver's seat, calling out to Brutal. Tall tells him, nah. I had friends in Bloodhaven Private that didn't survive the place. I don't work for you anymore and once word gets out, no one will. Good luck with your angry mob. He drives off with Electrocutioner making it very, very clear with the amount of obscenities that they don't work for him anymore. Later, once all the fires are put out, Barbara runs up the stairs to find Nightwing asking if he's okay. He tells her not really. Blockbuster knows who he is. Barbara, it won't be safe for us to be together. Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon can never be together. She looks at him for a moment. <laughs> Screw that! I love the part of you that wants to protect everyone, but this is one noble sacrifice I'm never going to accept. What about the danger? We're superheroes! We're always in danger, Dick! Darkseid could attack tomorrow. Kite Man could fall out of the sky at the wrong time. Trigon could step on me. I get that a storm could come, but we'll stand in it together. I'll even bring the umbrella. So I'm going to say something, and it's going to mean that you have to fight off a lot of Bruce's more toxic programming, along with your own stuff. But you're allowed to be happy. Frankly, so am I. Are you happy? With me? Nightwing looks her dead in the eyes. My life has been in constant danger for months. I've been shot at, beaten up, blown up. And I think this is the happiest I've ever been. Good. Let's keep going. Oracle and Nightwing, Batgirl and Robin, Dick and Babs. Forever. Nightwing tells her that it sounds pretty perfect. And she kisses him, telling him that he's worth dying for. But meanwhile, elsewhere, Blockbuster runs through an alleyway when a shadow steps up in front of him. What cape wants their head caved in now? And Heartless responds, Bad day. How? I killed you. You did. But I got better. And your time is up. Heartless fires his heart-removing device, pulling out Blockbuster's heart. I had to modify the machine a bit since you're a bit oversized. Didn't want to clog the tubes. Your corrupt heart will still be the center of Bloodhaven. It will just be beating in my chest. This is my city now. And that concludes catching you up on the Nightwing storyline, which has been epic ever since issue 85 or so. I hope you guys have enjoyed the battle against Blockbuster and the battle to take over Bloodhaven. And if you guys enjoy the Gotham Knights reference and the fact that the whole team worked together, go check us out over at the Ben and Friends gaming channel. We're going to be streaming and playing a whole lot of Gotham Knights, plus giving away copies of Gotham Knights if you just watch our videos related to Gotham Knights. We explain how you can enter those giveaways at the end of those and I'll link them down below. Now, don't forget to check out our sponsors over here. Check out Shortbox if you want to add comics to your collection. And go check us out over at Patreon to get early access to these videos. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time for the next Nightwing video right here.